Hello there and welcome to another Elite FPL video where I'm going to annoy people and it will annoy people um, and I kind of want to look at the psychology uh, regarding you fantasy football players that feel that I don't know I, I don't know what I generally don't know what the wording is um, about why you the audience get offended by the idiot behind the camera doing a wild card or a minus four a minus eight or a minus 12 in this case why let me know in the comments below i genuinely want to know why it offends you because it offends women why it offends you that the person on screen is doing what they're doing with their team surely as i've stated since i've played fantasy football um surely that's an advantage to you because I'm bottom of the league, then that's that's the overall rankings. I'm bottom of the world. Surely that's an advantage to you. You should be actually asking yourself the question. You know what? I'm actually doing all right. This guy is six millionth in the world. I'm three hundred thousandth. So what am I doing right that he's doing wrong? That's the question that you should be asking. You know, it's like I was speaking with my mum yesterday and I work in a mental health hospital and I was just discussing certain individuals that I come across and she made the point. It must put your life into perspective. And I'm like, yep, it does. It genuinely does. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. There are a lot of people that need a wake up call to their own personal lives. To realise you think you've got it bad, you haven't. You know, I, I've always joked that some of these freaks on social media need to be put into a mental health hospital. But we go back to FPL and it's, again, you think you've got it bad being a hundred thousandth in the world, three hundred thousandth, one millionth in the world. What do you think it's like being six millionth? To be honest, as I said last night, I couldn't care less. The first, so I think it, I think it was Sean Dyche that said this. I think it was Sean Dyche. I do remember the, the, the words to the effect of the first opening 10 game weeks or 10 matches, I kind of try and get a feel of how the, the league is going to go. And whether that was based on the championship or the Premier League, that was his mantra. It was just, I want to feel, I want to put out my feelers, see how it goes. And it's very similar in the world of fantasy football. I think Alex Volo summed it up brilliantly the other day on the Sunday surgery, where he said, I've now got a general feel of the players within the Premier League and who I want to bring in moving forward. And... For people like myself, as I've just said to Mr. Reed, I personally have got rid of individuals who are just not worth having in my team anymore. And I've replaced them with, I would argue, two good picks and two bad picks. Oh, sorry. Two good picks and two okay picks. The two good picks. Well, a Kanji over Gabriel, I would argue, is a very, very good move. I can already hear someone going, Yeah, but why didn't you go with Walker? Why didn't you go with Guardoli? Why didn't you go with Diaz? Why didn't you go with Edison? Don't worry about it. Again, what does it matter? Why do you care? It's like someone said on, on, on the YouTube, YouTube comments. Why on earth have you done a minus 12? I just wrote back, why do you care? Why does it affect you? In fact, I'd probably argue most people suffer from mental health from FPL point of view because they're more concerned about others on YouTube than they are about themselves. Don't get me wrong. We can have a discussion about it like I'm, I'm having now about my team. And I'm going to give you the reason as to why I've done it. But for someone to say you can't do, you can't do this, I can do a minus 40 if I want. What does it matter? So yeah, Kanji and for Gabriel is a, you could argue is an upgrade. Um, 
Fernandez to Foden. Some people would say it's a downgrade. Some people say it's an upgrade. Some would say it's, a, it's an even keel. Sterling in for Eze. Um, based on last night's match, I think that's a good swap. Uh, the only one, the only one where I'm like, this could backfire is Jackson in for Watkins. Only because of what I've seen. Now, admittedly, with Aston Villa, as I stated the other day, I wasn't particularly blown away by them. I wasn't particularly impressed by Watkins, if I'm honest. Uh, Chelsea, again, with Nicholas Jackson. He's got some pace to him. He's making the right runs. But again, not particularly blown away by him. But I'm jumping on the fixtures. That's the key thing for me, is jumping on the fixtures. And I think, as I just said to Mr. Reed on the voice message, I mean, you think I play it badly. <laughs> I'm going to deliberately play Mr. Reed's voice message. Because if you think I piss you off, <laughs> you're going to get very angry with Mr. Reed. You're going to get very, very angry with Mr. Reed. So. Yeah, I, I think that for me, it's if I hit the wild card, what will I do with this team? Well, I'd get rid of Anana for the Tottenham goalkeeper. I would have got rid of Gabriel. That's two players. I would have got rid of Fernandez. That's three. Eze, four. Rashford at a push five. Well, no, it would be Rashford five. This is a wild card. Rashford five. So that's five players. But I don't particularly want to get rid of Anana before Nottingham Forest. Rashford before Nottingham Forest. Martinelli is up against Fulham next. Don't particularly want to get rid of him. So thinking aloud here. The, the, the thought process is quite simply this. This team is for game week three. And then I am possibly, possibly hitting that wild card in game week four. Now, again, I can already hear someone going, well, if you're going to do it in game week four, do it, do it this week. The thing is, the players that I want to bring in for game week four and then I don't, I don't particularly, I'll be replacing, um, I would be replacing uh, better picks and I don't really want to go down that route. So for argument's sake, um, I don't want to get rid of Anana for the Spurs goalkeeper because the Spurs goalkeeper's away at Bournemouth as a simple example and I'd expect Bournemouth to score there. Whereas Man United, like I said, without going over it, is, is at home to, to Nottingham Forest and then you've got Arsenal at home to Fulham. Whereas next week, uh, the, the, the fixtures slowly change in favour of certain teams. And I think that from my personal perspective, I, I'm just happy with this, this, this minus 12. I mean, I, I, after the stream last night, I did, did a bit of predictions. And basically, which just reminds me before I forget... I was just looking at the bets that I did. £10.87. Um, so I did £10.50 worth of bets, but the total amount that I got one was £9.87. Um, so down by 63p. However, if Enzo, if Enzo had put that penalty away, I would actually be £1, about £1.50 up. Um, so I would have been a pound up on my £10.50 worth of bets if Fernandez had scored that penalty. That's how close the margins are with my betting. But yeah, I did some predictions yesterday. And I've gone with realistic outcome for the players that I've, brought, that I've, that I've got rid of versus unrealistic, unrealistic slash possible worst case scenario 
outcomes and then I've done it with the same in my player. So for instance, um, Gabriel, this is the realist, one point, Eze two points, Fernandez five, Watkins six. So basically I don't expect Gabriel or Eze to do I don't expect Gabriel to start. I don't expect Eze to do anything against Brentford. And then I expect Fernandez to get an attack in return, an assist, and Watkins to school. That's a real that's a realistic uh, prediction. That totals up to 14 points. That doesn't include bonus, that's just 14 points. Um a possible Worst case scenario for me would be Gabriel starts, he gets six points. Eze, Eze gets an assist, five points. Fernandez gets a goal and assist, plus three bonus points, that's 14. And Watkins get two goals and three bonus points, that's 13. So that's 38 points total. But again, that's a possibility, but unlikely. Whereas for the players that I've brought in, realistically, I've got a Kanji to get a clean sheet, Sterling to get an assist, Foden to get an assist, and Jackson to score. So that's 22 minus 12, that's 10 points. So I'm down by four points officially with the players I got rid of there. Um, and then a unlikely but possible scenario could be a Kanji to concede, and he only gets two points. Sterling to get a goal, that's seven points. Foden to get a goal and assist, 11. And then Jackson to still score, that's 26 points minus 12, that's 14. So I could break even with that. But based on what I've seen so far with the individuals that I'm getting rid of, I, again, don't expect much, whereas the players that I brought in, I'm expecting good things. I mean, some of the things Pep Guardiola came out uh, talking about Foden were very, very, very um, positive. And I'm certainly, ha I'm certainly happy that I own Foden um, now. And as I keep banging on about, I think that this team here ain't too bad. Ain't too bad moving forward. Um, you know, I can hold this for... If I don't wildcard in game week four, I can hold this for... Easily for game week four, where we've got... Man United away at Arsenal. Where there can be some... Save points for Inanna. Um I can't see that game particularly being... Um, high scoring... I've then got uh, the, the Chelsea assets versus Nottingham Forest. Man City assets against Fulham. And yeah, I, I, I think certainly um, I'm more at ease with this team. And as Jason used to do, you're better off just doing the hits early on in the season. Yes. You're losing out on points from X, Y, and Z, and you're not doing this, you're not doing that. But I've already lost out on the points. It's like Alex Volo said, with the likes of Embuemo and Matoma doing so well. If you don't have them, you're screwed, basically. If you don't play, and if you've benched their stupid as an example, you've missed out on that. It just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? So I'm, I'm happy with this team moving forward. And yeah, right, I'm bottom of every single league that I'm in. I'm basically bottom of the whole world. But, you know, the, the, the only way is up. The only way is up, as they say. And, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively happy. I mean, if I play Mr. Reed's voice message now, I'm, I'm, I don't think there is any, any form of slander in there whatsoever. Here we go. Let's... Um... Didn't score this week. Out you go. Am I going to do that with Harland? No. Um, Rashford, he's in one last time for Forrest. Um, I took Nketiah out for, um, oh, I, I never remember anything. I can't look it up on this, because if I go off the page, you know. Um, Nketiah, who would I have taken Nketiah out for? It wasn't Alvarez. Oh, Isaac. 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 Because um, they probably will score against, well, they will score against Liverpool. Obviously they will. 
Um, I'm still annoyed at myself for putting Diaz in. But no, I'm leaving him in now, that's it. Let's leave Diaz in because he will get points. I've made the decision to take Salah out. That's done. So forget about Salah now. That's that. Um, uh, I, I, wanna, I, th- I thought I'd try and triple up on, on Brighton, put Sorry March in as well as Matoma. But uh, how about that? And also, maybe Pedro isn't worth having. I think he's on, he's on my bench anyway. So, um, when Mr. Reed messaged me about fan, when he messages me about fantasy football or when, uh, no disrespect to Mr. Reed, but um, every single season I always finish above him. Um, and it is because of things like that. But apparently, according to you, I should be telling him, What are you doing this for? What, what are you. What I do say to Mr. Reed is, I don't think it's a, a, it's a good move getting rid of Enketia before Fulham. If you've already done it, you've done it. And you've brought in Isaac, who I can envisage doing quite well against Liverpool. I expect him to score. He may even get a goal and assist. He may even get two goals. He may even get, he may get two, two assists. He, basically, he may get two attacking returns in that game. I genuinely can see that. But to do a minus four to get rid of Enketia, who's got Fulham next, albeit Enketia was absolutely hopeless against. He looked all right, but he ain't, he ain't a good enough striker for Arsenal. I wouldn't be doing it. And like you just said, stick with Diaz. He's thinking of getting rid of him. Think about that. But he's a rival. Do whatever. If you want to, if you want to sabotage your team, sabotage. If you want to get rid of the good players because they, 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 for no reason, please do. You're a rival at the end of the day, and that's how people should be approaching this. Don't worry about others. Don't get me wrong. If I or Jason were these individuals who were the tipsters and are basically going, this is what I advise you to do slight difference but we're not we're just involving you as a part of a journey oh this guy's top of the youtube chat league this guy's top of the members league or a woman or this person's there there we are that's better language isn't it this person or this guy is top of the, the, the the rivals league that's what we do we're creating rivalries creating a bit of fun like I'm not going to name them, but an individual, a very popular account on Twitter and a very popular uh, YouTube channel came out defending his thing about Gabrielle and everything and how people are having a go at him for for advising against, um, sorry, for advising to bring in Gabrielle and then they get the late team news and people are having a go at him because it's like, well, I didn't get the team news and stuff, blah, 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 blah. And this guy was like, well, I'm not telling you what to do. It's like, well, you are. Because throughout the whole of the summer, you were literally saying, this is the player from Arsenal to choose. Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel. Because your content, along with many, 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 many other fantasy football channels, is about you telling your audience what to do. So you can't come out, and this is this is my point about what I was saying to my brother and what I was saying about Ricky Gervais last night and everything, is that you can't have a go at someone like me because I can I can defend myself. I can just go, whatever I say, I will have an argument as to why I've said it. Whereas these people that do these fantasy football channels that's all about tips and advice, they can't go back on what they say because it's like, yeah, but here's the evidence. It's, it's literally here. In your video that you produced, it's, it specifically states, these are the three Arsenal players that you must get. Jesus, Saka and Gabriel. And here's the reasons as to why. That's what you do. That's what your market is. And that's why people watch all your stuff. That's why you've got hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of subscribers and viewers. There was, a str- there was a stream going on the other day. Some Australian guy. 
Not gonna lie, I immediately thought, oh yeah, what happened to where that happened to FPL Dare? But this Australian guy was on, I turned off after ten seconds. There was nothing unique about it, it was just like it is now. Team up on screen, that's fine. And then it was Hi guys. Yeah, really poor game week. Um, how are your teams doing at the moment? Uh, what does it say there? Shall I bring in Alpha? Oh, talk about your fucking team. I don't give a fuck about what that person in chat's asking you. Who cares? Yeah, shall I play? St shall I bring Sterling in this week? I want to hear the thought pro. This is why. I, in fact, I tuned in. I didn't tune in live, unfortunately. The recording wouldn't bloody work. But I, I, I started listening to the recording between Andy and Luke um, on a space yesterday. I found it fantastic because, again, it was real. It was open. It was honest. It wasn't too... Indi well, specifically in Andy's case, it wasn't just him just doing the same old spiel. It was actually a man, a, a, a bloke in his 30s, <laughs> you know, going through his thought processes and wondering what the hell to do. It was fantastic. And as I keep stating, I'd love it if these people did this all the time, but they don't. Because again, their market is to answer your questions specifically. Tell me what to do. Please, Steve-o, just I need to know what to do. Why? Why can't you just do what Mr. Reed does? Why can't you do what Jason does? Why can't you do what John Harris does? Harbour boy. Why can't you do what, um, let's name check them, shall we? The people in the Members League who are doing exceptionally well at the moment. Um, so the likes of uh, Matty T, um, Ed Moore, El Mako, Peter Scully and FPL Mechanic, Kazali, Harry Dawson. Why can't you do what they're doing? What, you think these people come to me and say, Oh, Steve-O, I'm really, really concerned about the fact I don't have Jackson. Do, do I bring him in or not? I don't know, you're doing better than me. I mean, Matty T, for example, he played his wild card. I shouldn't have done that. Matty, what are you doing, mate? You can't play your wild card in game week two. You're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking moron, mate. You can't be doing that. What's that? You're 2,616th in the world. Oh, I better shut up. What's that? You're 60, 60 points this week. Oh. Who the fuck am I to tell Matty what to do? Yeah, and Matty may ask me a question about, look, Steve, oh, I, I respect the fact that you're actually quite good at your predictions. What do you think on this particular game? And I'll happily go through it. But to advise him when it comes to fantasy football, no. I ain't going to patronise him. I ain't going to fucking patronise someone that's 2,000th in the world and absolutely storm in the, the members league as a, as a simple example. I mean, Matty at the moment is uh, nine points clear of uh, Edmore. It's a simple example. But according to you, Matty shouldn't have wildcarded. Shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have bench boosted. And Matt, Matty, what were you doing, mate? Why did you bench boost in game week one? Are you that much of a fucking idiot? No. He's playing the game how he wants to play it. He's already said in the members chat, I'm playing it my way. I'm just going hell for leather. Fuck it. I don't care. Exactly. Am I complaining about that? No. But hold on a minute, Steve-O. Didn't you have a go at Firetog for his wildcard team? Yeah, I did. And I'll stand by it. As I've, as I've discussed to death, there is no point. I'll, I'll say it to Alex Volo. It doesn't matter how much I respect Alex Volo or how much I respect or put in high regard Firetog. At the end of the day, it's complete madness having so much money on the bench because you never know who to play. It doesn't matter how good your plan is. Oh, this player's got this fixture, whereas this player... Brilliant. But you know it doesn't work like that. Just take this weekend as a prime example. Nottingham Forest and, Chel and West Ham. Jason had two goalkeepers. Do I play Turner or Areola? Well, I'm going to play Turner because I believe he's got a better chance of a clean sheet. Great. Uh, the right pick. What happens? Oh, Ariola gets a, 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 a gets a penalty save. But according to people in the comments, apparently you're supposed to account for that. Yeah, but Ariola, he's he's a good penalty saver. I reiterate, do you really put that in your thought process when you're um when you're picking a goalkeeper? No. 
You just do it for clean sheet potential and potentially how many saves they're going to get. Hence with Anana. Anana is always going to be getting you save points. And there's a small possibility, as Jason said, but it doesn't come into my thinking, but there's a small possibility that he could get an assist. But then I don't think, for argument's sake, if I was to bench Anana and by some miracle he boots the ball up the field, finds Rashford and Rashford actually scores. And we know that's not going to happen because Rashford's shit. But he boots the ball up the field, finds Rashford, Rashford scores. Did I account for the assist? No. Yeah, but Jason said that there's a chance he'll get an assist. Yeah, but when is that going to happen? Is it going to happen in the Premier League? Is it going to happen in the Champions League? Is it going to happen in the FA Cup? Is it going to happen in the Carabao Cup? You don't know when. And again, it fascinates me why, why you people seem to think that you can predict the future. If you can predict the future, play the lottery. Play the lottery, go out going betting and flame and put your money down, waste your money and you'll be millionaires. Because unfortunately for people like you that do have a go at people like myself and Jason, for no reason at all, I reiterate this point, the amount of hate me and Jason get is just through the roof. But I think you've got more of a problem with yourself than you have with people like me and Jason. Like I said last night, at least I've got the bottle to come on Discord or to come on camera and express my opinion about whatever nonsense I want to talk about. Yeah, there may be the odd thing I say that may be incorrect. Fine. But I'll hold my hands up and go, all right, I got it wrong. Has it affected anything? No. Has it, has it done anything that's changed your life? No. But have you gone out your way to watch this YouTube, this, this video? Yeah. Well, that's on you then, isn't it? If, as I've, as I've stated before, if a regular contributor to the show gives me some constructive criticism, i.e. Podner, I'll take it on board, so will Jason, and we move forward with it. If it's just some random muppet that comes out and says, you're an idiot, Steve-o, for doing a minus 12. Why would you do that for? Because I can. Because I want to. Why do you care? But going back to Firetog's wildcard team or Alex Volo, I would be advising them, because I can advise, Please don't get a bench that's full of six million players and you're playing and trying to be clever because without going over it, it ain't going to work. You're better off just putting your money into your first 11 and moving forward with that. Just leave the bench as it is. Um, but going on the leagues quickly, yeah, Matty T is, um, is, is top of the members league at the moment. And then, like I said, we've got Ed Moore, El Mako and Peter Scully in first, second, third and fourth. In the um, rivals league, uh, top spot is uh, Vijay. Then we've got Alex Follow. Alex Follow is second in the rivals league. El Mako and then Matthias. He is, he is fourth. Um uh, Vijay is uh, 12 points clear of Alex Volo and then in the uh, YouTube chat league we have as follows uh, Vijay again Alex Volo, same names Peter Scully and, and Kazali uh, top 4, uh, just to give you an idea with Vijay he is 4,000th in the world, in fact he's virtually exactly 4,000th 4,048th and this week he got 76 points Thanks to Foden, Estupanan and Buemo. And Visa. So those, um, certainly in Visa, are very, a very nice differential there. Um, Foden, certainly a differential coming through for Vijay there. And yeah, like I say, if these players, I will continue saying this and so will Jason. If these players continue doing very, very well, don't pretend you don't know Elite FPL. Come on Discord. Come on Sunday Surgery. Come on the School Predictor stream. Talk to us. Don't be anonymous. Like, I would... Do you know what would really fucking piss me off, actually? I'm just going to use Vijay as a prime example. So, Vijay, he wins the game. Okay? Vijay wins this game. And, you know... He's been part of this community for quite a while. I know he has. 
never comes on Discord, never comes on the stream. But then the fantasy football game emails him to say, Hi Vijay, do you want to come on and talk about your, uh, your winning the FPL? Yeah, sure, why not? And then he goes on to Fantasy Scout, and then he goes on to all the other big channels, and doesn't even mention any FPL once. That, that would really piss me off, and it would certainly piss Jason off. I would, I'm not suggesting for one minute me and Jason do anything to help anybody, but I do know for a fact there are individuals that genuinely listen to my score predictions and go, and have actually, have genuinely picked a player based on my predictions and it's worked out. I know that for a fact. And they've literally said, to be fair, Steve has got quite a good thought process, but he doesn't listen to his own advice. But they take my advice, go through with it, and guess what? They, they get something out of it. And I would like to think that if those individuals were to win the Fantasy Premier League game and they were to go on these big channels, could you imagine if they went, I'll be honest with you, uh, Mark, um, if it wasn't for Elite FPL, I would not be winning this. Oh yeah, we know Elite FPL. Yeah, Steve-O, that, that idiot that, that rages all the time. Well, yeah, he rages, but there's a reason for it. That's why the channel's really, really fun to watch because it's a, it's, a, it's a genuine individuals in Jason and Steve-O. They've got a proper rivalry. But when they do videos and in-depth videos for members and going into details about why they're doing this, this and this and this, I actually pick up on something and I go, do you know what, steve was right there. And then v v Vijay, for example, says, I'll give you an example, Mark. Um, Steve-O, he decided that um, he wanted to go with a Man City triple up. And he didn't want to go with the triple up of Man City attack because his reasoning was that, look, um, there is a small possibility that these players are going to get rotated and th the goals are going to be spread across too much. So it would, be, it would be better to get a position in each section of your team. So striker, midfielder and defender because there's a higher chance of getting points from each of those rather than all piling it into one thing so i took that advice and i brought in uh, the kanji as an example a kanji not only did he get me a clean sheet he also got three bonus points foden he got an assist for holland alvarez did nothing Steve-O liked the look of Dan Juma, and for a game week 38 punt, I asked him, what do, you, what do you think about Everton's final match? Do you think I should go with Dan Juma? Me? Well, yeah, I saw him the other day, and I thought he looked really, really lively. They're up against the Wolves team that are going to be there for the taking. If you're going to go with a risky differential, go with Dan Juma. Dan Juma won me the FBO game. He came through with a goal and assist. Everton won 2-0. Just things like that. Could you imagine if Vijay said that? And that's why me and, me and Jason try and involve the community. Coming onto Discord. Getting involved with everything. Because like I say, these people, that all the big accounts, I've told you this, I don't, want to, I don't want to go on about it, but it's just true. These big accounts don't care who you are. Oh yeah, they're grateful that you're a member. Because you're paying them one ninety nine a month or whatever the price is, or ninety nine p. They're they're grateful. They don't care who you are though. They're not particularly interested. They're just happy that you're giving them money. Like I said, you're just a profile. You're just giving them numbers. But so I did ask in the um, Discord uh, regarding the um, questions, comments, or opinions uh, moving forward from last night or going into things. Yeah, I did see that um, Gabriel de Rock. Uh, let me just mute that for a second. Even though that's not muted. And of course, Discord takes four hours to load up, so I've got to go on my fucking phone. Just as I do that, that's when Discord loads. Um, but Gabriel de Rock did actually um, put a comment in the chat, and I'm going to read it. And it is as follows. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
I just wish this loaded up. It's a great advertisement for Discord, isn't it? Right, this is Gabriel the Rock. He says this. I didn't. I didn't catch the entire stream yesterday. You don't need to. If you didn't talk about the score predictor standards yet, maybe talk a bit about that. Um, uh, I don't even know how to access it. I'll be completely blunt with you, Gabriel de Rupp. I think that the Super Brew site is fucking atrocious. That's just my opinion. I don't even know where to go to get a leaderboard, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, um, all I know is that Dazid's doing all right. <laughs> Um, I just think that people need to be uh, reminded a lot during the season about this league or deadlines will be going, oh, fuck them. Gabriel, seriously, fuck them. If, if they've forgotten about doing their predictions, that's good for you and it's good for me. Yeah, I'll happily, me and Jason will happily say on the stream, right then, um, in, the, in the Super Brew predictor game, we're doing this. If people don't pick up on that and go, like Jason did the other day, didn't he? Oh no, I forgot. I need to put in my Super Brew predictions. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. When I was when I was doing the bins, I was like, "Damn, he's just remembered." But it's time to them at the end of the day. It's the same with the FPL deadlines and stuff. If you miss the deadlines, not my problem. <laughs> same with, the, in fact, the prime example. It's not your problem that I missed out on the Gabriel news and Saliba. Yeah, I can I can talk about it and say, well, these people were lucky enough to get the team. But there are people that I, there are people that I saw in the chat yesterday, genuinely annoyed that people have Saliba in their team. Fine, but just just look at it as this: they got the team leap done. That's the advantage to them. Brilliant, well done to them. I didn't get it because I was working. I'm not gonna blame anybody. Um, it's the same with this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna flame them. Um, constantly keep reminding people you need to make sure you're doing your score predictions fuck them to hell with it it's not my problem if it means I've got an advantage over one player brilliant genuinely brilliant um, I'm actually thinking of taking a punt on Isaac versus Liverpool this weekend well Mr Reid has um, Chilwell will be my captain at least once during this season maybe this game week is too soon not the worst option but on Friday it feels extra risky for some reason um, uh, this is the one week I would not be advising to be going against Holland. Um this is one of the very 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 few weeks that I'm like last week was the perfect example to go against Holland. not because he blanked not because he blanked but because number one, he had a tough game, and number two, there were some other options within people's teams that they could captain to go against Holland. So we had the likes of Salah as a prime example. That's it. And obviously, there were certain other individuals like um, Alex Volo who captained A1 Yinyi. A1 Yinyi. But overall, you know, most people either went Holland or Salah if they if 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 they wanted to go differential. But this week, uh, do not go against Holland. You can, please do. If you want, if you feel that Chilwell could be a good captaincy at some stage in the season, there could be no better time than this. I mean, a double game week perhaps, but. Luton at home, admittedly the hit. Oh yeah, I didn't go through that actually. I just I briefly went through the history with the players that I brought in. So it's suggesting Chelsea to win 3-1, Arsenal to win 3-1, Crystal Palace 1-1, one, one, Aston Villa to win 2-1, Man City 2-0, Man United 2-0 as basic average scores. Um, so yeah, Chelsea aren't particularly expected to keep a clean sheet. I think uh, the last two times, they, in fact, the two times that it says on whoscored.com, they have won three, one and three, two. So, yeah, it, it's expecting Luton to score at least one. Um, but me personally, I'd be going with a two nil win, two nil win against Luton. However, um, what I did say to Mister Reed on the voice message is that this game versus Luton for me, if Sterling still looks like he does, but he's still not getting attacking returns. And Jackson still looks like he does, but still not getting attacking turns. I am almost certainly going to be game week four doing the wild card because I realise actually maybe I'm, maybe I'm a bit wrong with Chelsea here. They're not good enough. 
Um, I think I'm going to have to wait. But their fixtures for the next several games are... They're too good to ignore. They're too good to ignore. Fulham... Sorry. Luton, Nottingham Forest, Bournemouth, Aston Villa, Fulham, Burnley. You can't ignore that. So I'm just jumping on that train. But I do want to see what they're like um, on Friday evening um yeah that's about it from me to be honest with you um, i know that in the chat there's going to be people that write the usual nonsense can't wait for that as i always say thanks for the engagement it pushes the video up by a small small margin yeah anyway as ever thanks for watching this journey between me and jason if you do enjoy the stuff that me and jason do why not become a subscriber and if you uh, enjoyed this video, why not hit the like button? Um, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to be at work. See you later.